Hey guys, welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to, on a summary block, get the blog items to have all the same height. You can see how the whole row is taking the same height of the content. So you get a little more symmetry with your, your blog items. Also, we're going to learn how to make the first one full width. And then you can have as many columns as you want below. So let's jump into this tutorial. I think you're really going to enjoy it. All right, first things first, this is just a regular summary block that I have here, right? So I'm gonna go into my edit mode and you can see I haven't added any additional styles to it. This is just pulling from that blog. Here's my width, here's my gutter. Um, you know, not much, nothing much special here, I got 10 items. So I'm just gonna hit save. Now let's just add a few basic styles here. So. I'm going to open up, I'm just gonna refresh my page over here. This is what it's gonna look. And so here we go, back to normal. So I'm gonna open up my code editor. Uh, I'll, let me just, for those of you who don't know how, I'm gonna just right click and hit inspect. And then we're gonna grab our selector up here and hover over one of our blog items just so it selects the HTML over here. And let's take a look. Let's make this background color a little gray. So I'm just gonna, select this entire summary item right there, that class, that first class, I'm gonna copy that, command C, come over in here, dot, cause it's a class, paste that in, opening, closing, curly brackets, and then we'll say background color, we'll just do, uh, we'll do like uh, FA, 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 and throw a hashtag in front of it to make it a hex code, and let's see, that probably could be a little darker, so why don't we do uh, like F3. F3, F3, there we go. So that's a little bit darker there. Then let's add a box shadow. Uh, not, yeah, box shadow around that. Shadow, we'll do 0px, 0px, uh, 5px, and then that's a little bit of a darker shadow. So let's sort of give it the same, maybe a little darker here. Why don't we do hex value at uh, 777? That'll do it. There we go. And also I want a little padding in there, but I can't put the padding around here because that's just going to do the entire block there. And that's not really, and maybe that's what you want, but that's not really what I want. I want that image to be full width. So I'm going to go back to our page here, grab our selector, and let's look at this content. So you see all of these, as I hover over these HTML elements here on the right, they highlight on the page here. I just want to grab the parent element so these are all in a line here, and then they're all indented under this, which is the parent element. And that has a class called summary content. So I'm gonna grab that summary content class. I'm gonna command C, copy it, go back to our custom CSS area over here, dot, cause it's a class, opening, closing, curly brackets, and then throw in our padding of 17 pixels there. And that'll pull it in. So that's looking a little better, but you can see our problem here. So these are uneven, that just, it looks jagged. It doesn't look very good. So what we wanna do is change the parent structure, the parent display that's holding all of these items. So quick little, let's go to school real quick. This is like our summary block, but what is surrounding all of these items, all of these summary items, these blog post items, is a parent element like this. And right now it is set to a display of block. And we want to set it to a display of grid. And with grid, we can use CSS grid to define how many rows, how many columns. It gives us a lot more customization as we do this. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's first, let's find this exact parent element, the direct parent element, I should say, of these items. So let's go back to our code here. Let's open up, let's refresh it so we can see our, our new styles there, make sure they're coming in nice and good. Oh man, now we're being slow. I'm just gonna grab my selector and start to move ahead. Oh no, everything froze. And we're back. Okay, so let's jump in. Here is, here is just the parent, the block. So this is the HTML block, but let's go back to just grabbing our, our item right here. And again, these are all, these are what, what's called sibling items because they're all right next to each other. They're not one within another. And the parent of all of these is right here. And you can see it has a class of summary item list. So let's grab that. 
and I'm going to copy it, Command-C. Also, I'll show you here, as I click on this item, the CSS properties and values that are associated with this HTML element display below. And if I keep scrolling down, you'll see, here we go, this div display block. So that's what I was saying over here. This is this parent element that's holding all of these items has a display of block. So we've copied this summary item list class. I'm going to cut them down here dot summary item list opening and closing and we're going to change this to a display of grid so there we go things are starting to move already you can see it's the the default value for a grid is just one column so it's all there and so what we want to do is create a grid template column so this is just the syntax if you want to template i didn't spell that right um, if you want to learn grid, there's tons of resources online. I'm building a course right now that doesn't only do grid, but all of CSS. So sign up for my newsletter if you care to learn more about that. CSS-tricks.com has a great tutorial, a uh, whole article about grid if you want to learn more there. But one thing we can do is say 1FR. So right now, right here, we're, we're defining the, um, the number of columns that we're going to have in our parent grid. 1FR means a fractional unit. So the fractional unit of the entire width. We're doing 1. But if I did 1FR2, you should see these should move over. So now we have 2. So each one of these 1FR, one fractional unit, defines a column. And if I do 2, that defines 2 columns. And you can imagine if I do 3, that's going to define 3 columns. But first, you can see this isn't exactly how we want this to look. And that's because if I come back over here, I saved it. Let's refresh, take a look. That's because of some other properties that Squarespace is adding. So we're going to need to override those. So let's look at each one of these summary items. You can see up here, Squarespace has added a width of 45%, a margin bottom, and a margin left. So we want to just remove all of those values. You can do it, you can see it right in your browser by just hitting this, and that'll remove them for that one element, but we wanna do it for all. And you can also see this is the summary item. So we can just add this, go back to our CSS, in our summary item class. So I'm just gonna force a width by saying 100% and giving it the important tag. So this is gonna override any other styles we have. And then I'm going to say margin, uh, margin, right, was it the one? I'm going to say initial, and that's just going to reset the initial. I need to spell that right. Um, that's going to reset our margins, and we're going to do the same thing with bottom, and let's do margin left to that one. There we go. So now these are all like right on top of each other. So we can also add this other property, which is super handy in CSS Grid. Again, since our, we're doing this in our parent element, our summary item list, I'm just going to say grid-gap, grap, grid-gap, and we're going to say 17 pixels. That's sort of the standard that Squarespace gives for a lot of blocks. Um, so there we go. And you, so you can obviously change this. Maybe you can do one rim, and that, that might give it some, some spatial symmetry there. Um, but one, 17 picks is what I'm going to leave it at. OK, so we are moving right along. But what if you didn't want to use fractional units? Because if you look at mobile, it sort of sticks. We could write some media queries to fix this. But there's a better way. So first, instead of doing 1FR, 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 we can do, oh, I should have said, see, we fixed the problem. Using grid, our problem's fixed. All of these are the same height. How fantastic is that? Super fun. OK, back to this. Instead of doing 1FR, 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 we can just say repeat 3 at 1FR. And that's going to give us, oh, so this isn't going to give us the same thing but not for the reason you're thinking. The reason this isn't working right now is because any CSS that we put in this area, it's processed through CSS less, which is a CSS preprocessor. CSS less CSS, uh, we'll just jump to that. You can see the whole website here, 
any anything you put into here is processed through less. And so that's also the reason if you've ever tried to copy code from here and paste it into your, your page settings here, maybe in advanced and style, that's sometimes it might not work. And that's because the code you write in here isn't actually true, just vanilla CSS. It gets processed. And so we need to do this little squiggly line. So this is our little squiggly line, which on a Mac, it's, it's right to the left of the one key. And then an opening single quote, and then put an opening single quote at the end here. It automatically does double, but delete the second. And that should actually work, but sometimes it just doesn't process over here. So I'm just going to hit save and then refresh. And let's see if that works. That doesn't seem to work. Oh, because we have one here. We actually want to do three there, not one. There we go. So now it's working. We still have a problem, though, with mobile. You can see it's still like that. So we can do this thing called auto fill auto dash fill and that is going to it's going to just fill up the space but right now we have it at one fractional unit fill up all of our space here so it's just going to be the entire thing but if we combine that with another grid thing we can use here min max um, and then we use we say the minimum value we want it to be is let's just say 300 pixels 300 pixels and the maximum value is that fractional unit that we said so that's as the smallest it's one fractional unit and there we go so now I can save now this is just a totally responsive grid I'll refresh it over here and you can see as I change the width of the screen let's see if it'll pop out and give us three there we go and if I move all the way down to mobile it's just one blog so that is looking awesome what this also grid also gives us the option to do is back in our CSS we can select this first blog post by doing a dot what do we want to do we want to grab our summary item but remember this this is a global seat these classes apply to every single thing on your website that has a class of summary item. And so we'll come back to that just to apply it here later. But this one summary item, I'm going to select this. So copy that down there. And I want to do colon. And I want to say nth of type. And in parentheses, one. So this is saying we're grabbing the first item with a class summary item. Opening, closing, curly brackets. Then we're going to say we're going to define the grid column for this for this item, and we're going to say uh, one, negative one, and that's not working the way we want it. But for the exact same reason, it wasn't working here. So I'm just going to copy these things in. There we go and a lot of times when you're in your Squarespace editor it doesn't do this because Squarespace the way it processes images is it only resizes them if you make some sort of change so change to the width of the screen so there you just pop it open then close it again and you'll see it work and let's refresh it over here boom here we go and we're done this is what we started with this is what we wanted this is how you make an awesome beautiful blog that looks even Okay, now let's just get this to apply just to this one specific block because I don't want this, these summary item styles to be applying to every single block, summary block that I put down on my website. So what you need to do is wrap all of this. All of this code needs to get only applied to this one block. And it works in a similar way. If you don't know how to do this, if you do know how to do this, feel free to skip this section. But if you don't, it works in a similar way that we're applying this code to just this one element. You see, we've, we've selected an element, we've wrapped it in these opening and closing brackets, and then we've applied properties. So we're going to select another element. We'll just say hashtag select dash me we'll do opening curly bracket but close out that last one scroll down to the bottom all of this code then put the closing curly bracket and i want all of that code to be applied all of this code 
will now be applied to, since I use a hashtag, the ID of select me. And this ID, this summary block doesn't have an ID of select me, so it's not going to get applied. So I'm going to actually just highlight all of this. If I hold down shift, shift and hit tab, you'll see it formats for me, which I like that a little bit more, so it makes it clearer to see. So now we just need to find the ID of just this block. So that's what we're looking for right now. I'm going to make this wide, pull it wide, right click. Uh, let's just go over here so it's easier. So this is the page we just did. If I refresh it, um, I didn't save my styles, did I? Save styles. And now everything we did is gone. How sad. Okay. Uh, command option I for me that's going to bring up this block of the, the, the web inspector that we just had. Um, I'm going to close out that. You could of course always hit right click and inspect to bring it up. Now let's grab our hover selector, hover over our block right there. And I jumped right to it. I probably shouldn't have done that. Hover over anything that is within the block. So let's just click on that. So this brings me to my image. But I'm just going to keep scrolling up and hovering over each item as I scroll up. And I'm going to wait till I get the whole thing. OK, now I've, I've highlighted the whole thing. And I'm going to look in just this element, this highlighted element, if there is an ID. Boom, there is an ID. But you also need to make sure it starts with the word block. It has to start with the word block. And this isn't it. So I'm going to keep scrolling up. Here's another one. ID doesn't start with the word block. So I'm going to keep going up. Here's another one, but there's no ID. So I'm going to keep going up. No, here we go. So now I've, look, I've highlighted the whole thing on my page here. There is an ID and it starts with the word block. So I'm going to copy that entire thing, Command C, and then come back to my CSS and put it, since it's an ID, classes, you start with a dot. IDs, you start with a hashtag. So I'm going to copy all that. Instead of select me, I'm going to paste in what I had and boom reapplied. So now all of this code we just wrote, since it's wrapped in this curly bracket and this curly bracket, and we have this selector before, it's only going to be applied to this one block. I hope this helps. If you want more tutorials, more information like this, sign up for my newsletter, check out my website. I have a ton of stuff going on. If this helped you, consider supporting me by subscribing. I have, you can buy me a coffee. I have a link where you can buy me a coffee. That's super helpful. Or just buy one of my plugins. I have some really awesome plugins that a lot of people enjoy. Check out those. Buy them. Uh, uh, if you have any questions on this, um, I'm sure over the months and maybe years, we'll see how long this one stays up, I'll be adding more CSS snippets to play around with some other things just based on the questions that you give me. So check out this blog on my website. Hope this helps. Send any questions you have my way. I'll chat with you later.